Hey, what's going on everybody? Today is gonna be part four on how to do spit spot. We will be dealing a lot with how the enemy interacts with the main character in the center and also how to restart our game. So let's get started. All right, so let's open up our shooter.xcode project and just make this a bit bigger. And today we will be dealing more with the collision of the main character. So first thing we need to do is actually create a new variable. So just say var hits will be equal to zero. So this will be the amount of hits the main person has encountered. Now, if we want these hits to go up, we need to go down here and right underneath this did begin contact function, I'm going to create a new function called collision main. So just go func collision main open parentheses, and inside of here, we're going to create an SK sprite node. So just type in enemy. This will be the name of our SK sprite node. And then colon SK sprite node. And then close off with the parentheses. Now open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket. And now inside of this, we wanna create an if statement. Now this if statement is gonna be if the hits is less than two, meaning we were hit once, so that's gonna put zero to one, and then twice we're gonna go one to two, and then three times, then we're gonna call the other function. And then the next thing we need to do is open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket. And inside of here, if you notice my game, as soon as the enemy hits the main ball, if you're in the gameplay, the ball grows. So we're gonna make that ball grow right now just by easily saying main ball dot run action, sk action dot scale by, and we're gonna be going by a scale of 1.5, and the duration will just be a very quick 0.4 seconds, like so. So we're going to make the ball grow, and what do we want to have happen with the enemy? So we're going to make our enemy be affected by gravity, and that'll make it fall down, and then we're going to also remove the actions from our enemy as well. Enemy dot physics body dot affected by gravity, and we're gonna set this equal to true. And then we're also gonna remove all the actions, so say enemy dot remove all actions, like so. And another thing we want to happen to our main ball is we're just going to change the color for a very brief period of time, meaning that it's it's been hit and that's why it's growing. So we're gonna say main ball dot run action and this will be a, an sk action dot sequence. And inside of this, we're going to change our color from the normal color that we have to a red color and then back to our normal color that we have. So inside of this, we're gonna say open square bracket, close square bracket and this will be sk action dot colorize with color. Now this color will be a UI color dot red color. The color blend factor will be equal to 1.0 seconds. We want the red color to ultimately take over what our main ball looks like and the duration of this will just be a very quick 0.1 seconds. We want this to go by very fast so people can continue on with their gameplay. Then after this, we need a comma, and we're gonna say sk action dot colorize with color. And inside of this, will this will be an sk color. So just type in sk color, open parentheses, and this will be an RGB value of what I have for my main ball. So if we go right up here, you will see that the RGB value for my main ball is 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0 0.2, with an alpha of 1.0. So let's go to our main ball again, and this will be the red value of 0 0.2, 0.2 and 0.2 with a alpha of 1.0. So it's not going to be see-through and it's going to be a dark gray color as we said it before. Our color blend factor will be 1.0, meaning that again that the color is gonna take over our object and the duration of this will be again a very quick 0.1 seconds. Now this function is actually not going to be called right now. So we need to actually go right up here to our first body, right at these last two that I have right here. So this will be the first body not name equals main ball and the second body not name equals enemy. So inside of here, we're gonna go collision main, meaning we wanna call this function right down here. And then we're going to set the enemy equal to our second body. As you can see right here, our second body dot name will be equal to enemy. And in this other else if statement, our first body dot name will be equal to enemy. So inside of our second one, we're just gonna type in collision main and just type in first body. And now if we were to build and run this, now one thing you will notice is that our enemies are actually not touching the ball. So let's head back over to our project and right down here in the enemies function, we're going to change a few things. So in our enemy dot physics body dot dynamic equals false, we're actually going to set this equal to true. And we're also going to say enemy dot physics body dot affected by gravity, and we will set this equal to false. And now this is going to make it more visible to the other objects. So if we were to build and run this now, you will see that our enemy is gonna come in and as soon as it hits the ball now, it's going to grow. 
right now, as you can see, it's growing really, really big. So we're going to make it stop at a certain point. So let's head back over to our project and inside of our collision main right here. And inside of this if statement, we want to say hits plus plus, meaning we want to add to one to the hits every time. And now if we were to build and run this, we were, we're going to have a level at which it stops. So we hit it, and there you have it. Now another thing is these enemy vols keep coming. Now I don't want this to keep happening because if, as you can see, the nodes are building up right here and it's just gonna use more of the processing power. If we head right over here to our little graph right here, you're gonna see that it's using 51% of our CPU and it's gonna keep growing as more and more nodes come in. So we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna go right down here in our collision main and we're also gonna say enemy timer dot invalidate. So we're going to invalidate our enemy timer, or basically the function that calls our enemies. So let's build and run this now. And as you will see, we have one, two, three, and that should stop our enemy timer from coming in. Now another thing you can do, I wanted this little action of them falling when they hit the ball. So if we were to build and run this right now, as you can see, the balls are going to hit, but as soon as they hit, they kind of fall. Not all of them do, but most of them do. So if you want... But this might not be the most practical because we're getting we're still getting more nodes than I would like to. So let's head back over here and I'm just going to say enemy dot remove from parent. And we're just going to delete the enemy off of our scene. And now if I were to build and run this, the enemy is going to hit our ball and just destroy itself. Like so. Now again, it only does that if you're in that if statement. So let's head back over to our collision main. So inside of this, we want to have an else statement as well. So we're going to type in else, open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket, and we are going to say enemy dot remove from parent. And also, we don't want this enemy timer to invalidate when the hits are less than two, because that's in the middle of the gameplay. So I misplaced that. We need to put this enemy timer dot invalidate right in our else statement like so. Now this should make all our enemies go away as soon as they touch the ball. So let's build and run this. You have one, two, three, they all hit the enemy and boom, all of our enemies are gone and we just have this one node left. So let's say you want to play this game again and again and again. So let's head back over to our project and we're going to go right up here and we're going to create a new variable. And this variable will be game started. So it's going to see if our game has started. And right now we're going to set this equal to false because we want we don't want as soon as the game loads to for the person playing to be attacked by enemies if they don't really know what they're doing. We want them to get accustomed with the game a little bit more and then they can start getting attacked by enemies. So using this game started method, we're actually going to go down here and we're going to go right into our touches began and this will allow us to start our game again and again. So we're going to say if the game started is equal equal to false then open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket. Then we want to start our enemy timer. So we're gonna say enemy timer will be equal to, and we actually created this right up here in our did move to view. So just take this enemy timer right here. We're just gonna copy and delete that off of our did move to view because we don't want the enemies to start coming at us as soon as the view loads. And then we're gonna go right down here to our touches began and just paste that right into there. Now when the game started equals equals false, next thing we need to do is we're going to just say game started will be equal to true. So we're going to make the game start. Now also when this game starts, we want our main character to be set down to a smaller size. So we're going to say main ball dot run action, and this will be an sk action dot scale to. Now what do we want our main ball to scale down to? Let's go right up here to our main ball dot size. And this size right here is actually a bit wrong. So we actually need to go up, go over to our calculator real quick. And we're just going to do a calculation of 100 times 1.5 equals equals. And this will be 225. On the third time it gets hit, it doesn't grow at all. So it's going to be 225. So let's head back over here. And I'm going to go to my main ball dot size and set the width to 225. And my height will be 225. Now let's head back over to our main ball dot run action and we want it to scale down to a third of its value. So now let's calculate what we want it to scale down to. So let's head back over to our calculator and I'm just going to say 100 divided by 225 and this will equal 0 0.444. So let's head back over to our project and we're going to make it scale down by 0 0.44 with a duration of 0 0.2 seconds. We're going to make this very fast. So now let's build and run this. And now as you will see, I have my main ball. I click the screen and it's going to get down to this smaller size. 
and you can of course adjust the size to your likings like so. And you can of course adjust the size to your likings. So now let's head back over to our project, and inside of this touches began, we're also going to have an else statement. Now this will basically mean as soon as the game has started, we want all the rest of our normal functions to continue. So now if we were to build and run this with our else statement, you will see that I will press play, and the ball is not shot as soon as I press play, and you can play your game like so. Now one thing you will notice is I, if I hit the enemy and it's above me and it comes down and falls on top of the main character, that still counts as a hit. Now we don't want that to happen, we want the ball to just fall right behind it. So let's head back over to our project and we're just going to change with our collision bullet. We're just going to change the contact test of our enemy. So we're going to say enemy.physicsbody.contacttestbitmask will be equal to zero. Now I don't want this to hit anything so I'm automatically just going to set it as zero. Now let's go down here and I'm just going to say enemy.name will be equal to nil. It's not going to have a name. And we also need to say enemy.physicsbody.collisionbitmask and we will set this equal to zero as well. We don't want to collide with anything so now let's build and run. Now as you can see, if I end the game, it, the game is still thinking it's going on. So let's head back over to our project, and we're just going to go right up here to our collision main. And right inside of our else statement here, we're going to say game started will be equal to false. And now if we were to build and run this, we will have our game to be able to play over and over again. So let's play right now. Aha! And this is... <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. So this is another error that might occur in your gameplay. Now in order to fix this, you need to just say if the contact dot body A is not equal to nil, meaning that there is a body A, so we're going to type in not equal to nil, and our contact dot body B is not equal to nil, open curly bracket, and then close curly bracket right after all of that. And you can also just select all of this, right click, and we're going to change the structure and shift right. And now, as you can see, we have this if statement. And now, if the contact is not equal to nil, meaning that there is something inside of our contact now, then we're going to run this. And this will prevent any errors like this to occur. Now build and run. And now I can click on the screen, and if I hit the enemy, everything is working fine right now. And if I get hit by all of these enemies, then I can just easily restart the game and that should restart my enemies too. And inside of this if statement right up here, we're just gonna type in dot node. That, that should prevent it, like so. Now let's build around. And we can hit all of our enemies like so. And then I shall start the game again as soon as the enemies stop coming and I can continue on playing. And as you can see, the enemies are falling through my object as well. And also, as you can see, the enemies were still coming at my ball, but they weren't growing and the ball in the middle wasn't growing in size. So let's head back over to our touches began, and right inside of this if game started equals equals false, we want to say hits will be equal to zero. And now let's build and run. And now I can press play again, and as soon as the enemies start coming again, I can get hit again three times, and voila, there you have it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more tutorials like this for me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Part 4 is going to be dealing a lot with scoring and labels, so be sure to subscribe for that. Anyway, I will see you in the next one.